Hello, welcome to Monday Rules Blues. My name is Shinobi Selji and let's get to the rules stuff. We're going to talk about a move called the Soul Crush and how exactly does it crush your soul. Just a disclaimer, this is just our interpretation of the rules, so don't be hating on us. So yes, this week is about the Soul Crush, which sometimes can be called Jammer Recycling. It's where someone blocks an opposing skater off the track, then skates clockwise or anti-Debbie wise, forcing them to skate further away from the pack before they can get back in bounds. For the most part, we're going to be talking about the blockers who are sending the jammers off the track. That's the most common way that the soul crush happens. Most of the same rules apply when it is jammer on jammer or blocker on blocker for the soul crush, but those kind of equal position soul crushes really put everyone at a disadvantage, so they don't happen very often. This play became very common when the new rules were released in January 2013, and you've probably seen it done at bouts often, and you'll be like, why is that chick skating backwards? So we are going to take a look at the rules that are behind the soul crush. The most important rules that make the soul crush possible are 6.11, and 6.11.1 which say that when the skater is knocked out of bounds by a block they will get a track cut penalty if they get back on the track in front of the person who blocked them out. So basically the person who blocked you out is now the boss of you and can tell you when you can legally re-enter the track. 6.8.4 also factors into the soul crush. That rule says that inbound players do not have to yield right of way to returning out of bounds skaters but there are limits to the soul crush. If the skater who blocked you gets a penalty goes out of bounds, goes down, or exits the engagement zone if they're a blocker, then you don't have to enter behind them because they're no longer in play. 6.11.1.4 is the most common way that the soul crush ends. Once the blocker has skated back more than 20 feet from the pack, they've exited the engagement zone, and not only can the out of bounds skater come back in front of them, they're not allowed to do any more blocking until they're back within 20 feet of the pack according to 4.3.2.1. If you're very good at figuring out how far behind the pack you are as a blocker, you can stop just short of the 20 foot mark and start hitting the jammer again. Legally, of course, as soon as she's touching the track. This 20 foot restriction is the only thing that is different when you have a jammer on jammer soul crush. Even though 6.11.1.4 says it refers to skaters, refs will enforce this as only applying to blockers. The definition of the engagement zone in the glossary specifically states, says that jammers can engage each other outside of the engagement zone. So it is generally agreed on that 6.11.1.4 doesn't really apply to them. They can skate clockwise as far as they want, sort of. Adding even more complications to the jammer and jammer soul crush, there was a clarification issued in April 2013 that just made it a little bit more difficult. During a jammer on jammer soul crush attempt, the out of bounds jammer can just stand there and wait. She doesn't have to chase the other jammer. Eventually, the other jammer is going to either start skating counterclockwise again and catch back up to where she's standing, or she'll go out of bounds, down, or get a penalty. When any of that happens, the out of bounds jammer can come back onto the track from where she's standing. Cobra Kai deviously likes this part. Just because you're used to chasing down blockers so you can get back on the track as fast as you can, don't get caught up in the moment and chase a jammer that does it to you. You can't score from out of bounds, and she can't either while she's skating clockwise, so just wait her out. The other part of the same clarification says that no matter how far the other jammer skates clockwise, you don't have to skate more than one lap out of bounds to catch her. Cobra Kai thinks this means that if she were to fight her way through the pack going clockwise and then keep going, you'd be safe from the cutting penalty by coming in behind the pack. But that part of the clarification is worded a little confusing. Thankfully, that's a very unusual situation that will probably never happen to you. Cobra Kai would like to leave all you fine ladies and gentlemen with one last tip. Don't get so fixated on the skater who blocked you off the track that you get a penalty for cutting someone else. Another sneaky blocker could actually skate behind you while you're not looking, so keep your eyes open, people. So that's it for this week, guys. Go out there and crush other people's souls in roller derby. And uh, yeah, if you have a rule that you want us to talk about, leave a comment below or send us a message on Facebook or Twitter or on Tumblr. And I'll see you guys next week. Three, two, one, go. Hello, Debbie people. Welcome to Monday Rules Blues. My name is Shinobi Selty and I'm about to smack the shit out of my husband because he's mocking me over there. You threw me off. I had good mojo going and you broke it. I hate you. This is my, blah, 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 blah. That's fine. Everything's fine, it's all fine. No, in the glossary, agree that. Well, that's a whole lot of G's and S's and things. So, oh man, I didn't look up at the camera when it started. Oh, I hate this sentence right now. That jammers can engage in each other. Can engage each other? Can engage each other.